the water will crash into each curve. Okay, so you're giving me a case of why it would be slow. I want to argue the opposite. It cannot stay all bunched in, so it needs to take out really fast all the water out. He's saying, look, the water volume can pile up. The water has to be released. I am Wendy Rouget. I teach at Lewisdale Elementary School in Hyattsville, Maryland. If it's a dam, right? Love that thinking. Very nice. Our students come from all over the world, from Africa, Central, South America, uh, possibly the U.S. This is a place where soil, they might have to take the soil with them. I used to live in New York City. I grew up in the Caribbean, but came to the U.S. when I was very young. And when I moved down here, I was very scared of the outdoors and all the green. It's non-native and it's invasive. They take over the whole... I approach the MIWI as something that will help me bring my teaching and my students into 21st century issues and learning. To me, the 21st century occurred. We need to be in it as much as possible. A lot of the NGSS science and engineering practices, all of them we address in some way in the classroom. So when we brought in the stream table, it was designing a, an experiment, having questions, using research to get data to come up with conclusions and things like that. To 24. Next was 33. Next was 34. I'll teach you how to calculate average and we're going to graph the average so we can analyze our data. Do you think the curvier line is causing more of a flow or less of a flow? One of the big things that I use is claim evidence reasoning statements. What's your claim? How are you going to back it up? What does your research show? How come it's 18 and you move all the way to 30? And just keep them focused back because a lot of times they want to go to their opinions as the backup and I want to take them away from that. Let it be research-based. Yeah, so it's 26. And then we ultimately go up to the stream and we apply all what we've learned at school to that environment. Okay, you can put those things right there. It's not here, it's like a white dot. Oh, it does have a little bit of hair, but not It's the, um... If you are interested in this field, this yeah. would be stream ecology. So you're testing the water here. Looking over here, like in the streams, we're seeing like how clean is the water, like if it's good for the animals that live in it. So far, the stuff we have done, it's okay. pretty good. Yeah, like the all the levels are fine, the algae, it's all good. Some of the superstars who are linguistic, logical learners, they don't shine as much when we go outside. So you have a different type of student getting the opportunity to show how smart they are. Let's use the dichotomous key and identify. Some of you are saying you have a lobster. I'm not sure if that's right. Legs or no legs? And look at the damselflies. And it has happened time and time again. So for instance, one of the things that I learned from my students it's let go of this idea that we had to identify every macroinvertebrate correctly. They think it's a damselfly because it has a thinner th thorax. And yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It has a damsel. Yeah. Yeah. But that tail. Wait, wait. The tail in the middle was bigger than two of them at the side. And look at the Are you using your logic? Do you have evidence to support what you're saying? That was the most important part. We can disagree on if we think it's a mayfly lava or stonefly lava, that's not the big deal. It's the process that you back it up with evidence. And some of the students who don't shine, they're the ones who are really good at staying focused and identifying and really arguing their case. The macroinvertebrates, there weren't as many um, ones that weren't. Today you learned a lot like about macroinvertebrates, how to identify them and how to use them to determine if a stream is healthy. We've done things on runoff. We talked about water quality a little bit. Now, I want you to answer the essential question. How do the actions of humans, positive or negative, impact the environment or the planet? They should make sure that they don't pollute the water, like they don't release chemicals in the water. We can make um, all the public places closer together, like in the community, so that we don't always have to use our cars. We could use bikes or just walk. What about the top of the schools? Which one would it classify as? Impervious or pervious? The MIWI really does service. not add on to any of the standards that I have to teach. To me, it's all looking at it through a different lens, and it helps to focus me, and it helps me to see how really it connects to action projects or making sure the activities that we do connect to place-based, problem-based learning. So it helps just frame it a much better. Yeah, it's coming from that way down.
So the action part, for about 100 kids on average, they will go up to the stream and we will clean the whole pot. Just get our cherry pickers, we put on our vest. It seems like it's simple, it's just cleaning up, but a lot of our students use the same park for picnics all throughout the year. That's where they spend a lot of their time with their families on a daily basis. So I want them to be responsible for the quality of the park. I want when they walk in the door, they'll see the desk set up a certain way, or they'll see different materials and equipment. It's like, what are we going to do with that? I want that excitement. And a few years ago, I overheard a kid say, you never know what we're going to do in this class. And that was the biggest compliment. I don't need any awards. That, to me, says it all.